Okay, today we're going to learn how to create um, cross-referencing in our InDesign CS4 document. Usually create cross-referencing in very large documents such as manuals, user's guides, and books that you create in InDesign. You, when you create a PDF, from those large documents, you do want to create some kind of interactive elements that would help your customer navigate through large documents. In this very short uh, document that I have created for our tutorial, I am going to illustrate you how to create cross-references in InDesign. If I were to zoom in right now at 150% and then use my uh, interactive links to navigate to graph 2 and then navigate to graph 4, you can see that these links shortened the way how the customer would go about navigating through your document. So how do I go about creating these little links that will immediately bring us to the object of our interest? I will close this PDF and start in InDesign this tutorial. Before I am going to create our first cross-reference that starts in the second paragraph on page 1 under the graph 1, I have to create some additional elements that will help me breeze through the document very fast. So first of all I have to look at my first instance and think that once I click on this as a customer, would I like to go to the caption of my figure? Would I actually like to go to the figure? And what part of the figure do I want to see immediately? I know, even though the caption plays a very vital po point in identifying the figure, I know that when I click on my reference, I want to see the figure most of all. So how do I create this focal point in my cross-reference? I begin this by create, creating a text box and naming it exactly the same way as my cross-reference is in the text. Here it says graph1 and that's what I have to type here, graph1. I would like to assign this uh, text individual color that I will carry throughout the document and utilize at the end of the tutorial. I am going to manipulate some colors here to create an individual color that I will use as um, a figure tag apl applied right here. I will call it as a graph tag. I will click OK and it's immediately applied to my text. I'm also going to create a paragraph style that I'm going to also call the graph tag and apply style to selection. I click OK and now I have an individual color and an individual paragraph style applied to this graph tag. I now have to create the same thing for all the figures that I have in my document. I'm going to scroll to the end of the document to identify how many graphs I have. I have four of them here. So I go to page one and create three more graph tags that I'm going to utilize for cross-referencing. Once I made a copy, I have to rename them so I will not have duplication appearing in my document. Graph one, I'm going to now place at the top left corner of the graph one. If you would like your customer to look immediately upon referencing the graph in the center or some other area in your figure, please put that tag there. But since for general reference, most of the customers start looking at their figures at the top left corner, this is where I'm going to put my tag. I select object and a tag and then control G it to group together. I'm grouping the objects together so that in the future, if I were uh, to change my layout and uh, rearrange my figures, I could do so without worrying about losing the tag. I'm going to now copy and do the same thing 
to the other sections. I move the graph tag here to the object and group it. And I will do the same thing by combining the graph tags with objects on the following page. So graph 3 with graph 3 and graph 4 with graph 4. Okay. My next step here would be to identify the style I would like to apply to this cross-reference so it will be unique by itself. In my PDF you saw that this instance was uh, times New Roman italicized in red. That was a unique character style that I'm going to create right now. I will call a style as a G style. You can give it any name you would like. And for the formats it will be times. And uh, I will select uh, just basic times, italic. And for my colors I will select red. And that's fine. And now I'm finally ready to create cross-reference. To create it, all I have to do is just select the mentioning of the cross-reference that I would like it to be a clickable hyperlink. In the hyperlink panel, select insert cross-reference. Now in this menu, what you have to do is select the paragraph style that we created called graph tag and apply the graph one from the selection. So I'm selecting graph tag and from the selection I'm applying graph 1 because that's what was mentioned here. From the cross-reference format I'm going to create one and only style that I will use for the rest of this tutorial. To create the style I first have to select the default style which in this instance could be full paragraph but since I don't want to replace any default styles I'm just going to duplicate it and name it graphs. For definition, I will remove all unnecessary elements and leave the code clean and crisp the way I actually want it. From the character styles that I would like to apply to this instance, I will select G style, which is a times italicized red. This is fine. For the appearance, I do want to make sure it's invisible because I sure don't want to select visible and have this black box around my hyperlink. So I do change it back to invisible and click OK. My first reference is done. For the next references, all I have to do is just do a few clicks. But since I don't really want to be reading through the text to try to figure out where my next instance is, all I have to do now is go to Edit, Find and Change, Type Graph and Find What, and for Search, I have to select Search the whole document. I click Find Next, and my next uh, reference pops up as the graph 4. I now have to go to hyperlinks, insert cross-reference, graph tag, graph 4. I keep the same format, appearance is invisible. OK, find next. And repeat the same thing for all of the next appearances that I see. Insert cross-reference, graph tag, 2. Everything is the same, and the same thing applies to graph 3. So that's pretty much how cross-references are done for these graphs. If you do forget while you click on this what graphs it was, you can usually cancel out of it and then remind yourself that, oh, this is graph 3, and go back to instances and reinsert the graph tags by clicking appropriate graphs. I should have one more instance here until uh, I'm done cross-referencing this document. Make sure you make a clean selection before you apply the cross-reference and then select the appropriate fields. And that's all for cross-referencing to this document. My final step that I have here is to remove the graph tags that I created in the beginning to reference where my customers will look. To uh, remove them in one single step, all you have to do in the swatch palette, select graph tag and put it into the trash. In the palette that pops up from the defined swatch, select none 
and click OK. In one click, all of the fields are cleared and you will have a very nice PDF created. The final step would be to create a PDF. You would have to go to File and then select either Adobe PDF Presets or Export. I will go to Export and make it as Adobe PDF from Save As Type and I will call it Demo 3 and click Save. In my uh, window that pops up, select any predefined Adobe PDF presets you have. All you need to make sure that you select is hyperlinks has to be checked in and interactive elements. You click Export and in a few minutes our PDF is created with all links interactive and functionable. Now, if you go to page 3 of this document, you will see that there is uh, an instance here that's called C graphs 2, 3, and 4. This is another cross-reference that one can create and navigate to. These are custom, customized cross-references and you and you can view how to make those in my next tutorial about customized cross references hope you enjoyed this video and i wish you all the best thank you very much and uh, goodbye